Uh, and by that, I would like to introduce the first speaker, who is uh, Dr. Marco De Gidi. He's uh, running a, a very successful private practice in Bologna, but he's also an adjunct professor at uh, University of Chieti, also an adjunct professor at University of Bologna, and he's a well-known speaker in Italy and outside uh, Italy, and is also very active in research and have a lot of publications. And the title of Dr. De Gidi's um, lecture is Primary Stability Determination, uh, operating, uh, operating Surgeon's Perception and object, Objective Measurements. So welcome, uh, Dr. De Gidi. Dear colleagues, Lars, thank you for the introduction. And uh, so this morning, in very shortly and briefly, I want to share with you uh, our uh, study that we did uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, that is a study about the uh, surgeon perception of the primary stability. So we know that immediate loading is a successful procedure. There are a number of publications that are now on the PubMed is increasing constantly, meaning that this is a very reliable procedure. However, we know that immediate loading um, relies, in order to be successful, meet the, uh, at least those two prerequisites. Achieve a good primary stability and avoid micro-movement micro uh, of the implant interface during the healing time. Primary stability <clears throat> is really something that needs to be probably further defined. As you can see from the EO consensus of a few years ago, it's commonly uh, indicated like a lack of movement of the implant immediately after the placement. More generally, is a measure of the difficulty of displacing an object or system from equilibrium. However, whenever we talk about an implant that is supposed to be lowered, we always say that, well, I achieve a good primary stability, then I load it. However, good <coughs> is, of course, uh, a very undefined term. And the mere fact that we have to uh, rely uh, to use a, a descriptive adjective like good, further defined, that we are relying on an, uh, a very impalpable issue that very strongly is influenced by the individual subjectivity and it is far from any objective and scientific substances. So, good primary stability may be different from for me or for you or for whatever. We have been looking uh, for many different methods in order to more objectively evaluate primary stability. And you know that several of these have been proposed, like the Pareto test. Uh, there are a series of different torque wrench or ratchet that are supposed to give you some idea of the kind of threshold of the insertion torque and uh, many drilling machine give you, again, an idea, like uh, did I insert the implant with uh, a kind of amount of uh, insertion torque that is uh, approximately close to a certain threshold or maybe below, but we have not really an exact figures. There are only a few machines that are in the market that are able to give you exactly an idea of uh, uh, the amount of the insertion torque that, for example, that you deliver, and, and because they display like a kind of graph and they give you some like uh, precise uh, well, amount of, uh, of uh, Newton centimeters. And also, of course, we have the OCEL device that is the only one available for testing our implant with the RFA technique. Nevertheless, I have to tell you that in most countries, 
and um, <clears throat> wherever I, I've been, those machines, they are not so widely uh, diffused. So most people are still relying on the perception. They, most surgeons, they place the implant and they assume that uh, the primary stability is uh, more or less good from like uh, percussion test or basically the feeling. You, 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 are, you just place an implant and you say, okay, this is, is a good load. It, it's entered with a good torque and I think I can load it. So we did a very simple study. We mm, evaluate the difference between uh, the dental surgeon perception and the real values of RFA and insertion torque. In, uh, you see, in 2007, we observe a group of 152 patients. And uh, uh, on this patient, we place always the same implant. So this is, in, that, in this case, was the side implant. Uh, 517 implants consecutively placed. The implant distribution, you see, is more or less uh, in every anatomic region of the mouth. And of course, we met all the different uh, bone qualities and uh, basically all range of length and diameter of the implant has been used. Of course, we are talking of this particular implant systems. All the implants were inserted by uh, the same oral surgeon who has con considerable experience in implant surgery and immediate loading technique. Now we can divide this uh, simple study in three chapters. One, the first one is guessing. For all the 514 implants, immediately after the insertion, the other surgeon was asked to indicate the probable RFA values according to his perception of primary stability and, of course, also the probable insertion torque values. The second step was actually to actually measure this value. So the first, the RFA was measured, of course, with the hostel mentor. And the torque was measured with the double H unit E that has the possibility to give you the peak torque the, the, and a lot of uh, data. Then, of course, the third and last step was grouping. We grouped all the records in three groups low, medium, and high values. This was true for the ISQ and for the, the torque. So those more or less were the group. Let's see the result. The mean, and I underlined mean, uh, perceived RFA was 72.2. And you see that uh, the mean real RFA was 73.5. Of course, you have to look at the range, and the range was more or less huge. So we got a huge range from 26 to 90 here, and from 35 to 94. And this is why the, even if the, the result seems so close to each other, the difference indeed was statistically significant. As to the perceived insertion torque, that was 39.1. And again, the real mean in certain torque was 39.9. But again, I want to underline the, uh, the range that, that was from 5 to 90, from 4 to 71. In this case, the difference was not statistically significant. These are the mean values and distribution. So with, these are the perceived, and these are the real value. And maybe with this is easier. So what you can see is the torque, the real torque is distributing more or less uh, one third, one third, one third in the low, medium, and high value. Why the RFAs has a tendency to have higher values and, and medium. So, but uh, altogether, you see those two values are higher than those two. So the real values, the first result is that, of course, this kind of implant is able to achieve primary stability 
good primary stability in different clinical and anatomical situations. This, of course, is the first observation. Then let's look at the correlation between the real insertion torque and the real RFA. As many others before us, we were not really able to find a, a statistical significant correlation. So you see the spear correlation is very poor. So this value is good when it's close to one. So we are far away. Even so, if you look at this chart, uh, table, what we, we can see that uh, most often when we have a, a high insertion torque, we have a tendency to have a high RFA value in 80% of the cases. Nevertheless, that means that in 20% of the cases, this is doesn't happen. This is not the case. So, right, we have not, didn't meet any, any, any statistical correlation between those two values. And this, of course, confirmed what uh, Lars has uh, published many times, that RFA and insertion torque are two good parameters to evaluate primary stability, but they measure different things. The first is indicating the resistance to the bending load, and the insertion torque is the resistance to the shear forces. Result. As you can see, the mean difference between the real RFA and the perceived was minus one, again with the huge range here. Why the mean difference between the perceived insertion and torque and the real and the perceived insertion and torque was again minus 1.3, again with a huge range. So generally, we are underestimating the primary stability. So as you can see, when we are in the low range, we perceive the the, uh, the RFA as low, but it's lower, actually, is much lower. And the same happened for the insertion torque. We feel that the implant was treated with like a poor insertion torque. Actually, it's much poor. It's poorer. In the high range, we have the tendency of opposite. We overestimate. We felt that the implant as a good primary stability, well, is even more. So considering again the mean the mean the mean perceived value of primary stability is generally is underestimated. Nevertheless, the analysis of the previous table show that the underestimation is particularly evident again when primary stability is low or medium, where there is an overestimation. When the primary stability is actually high, the range of mistakes you see, can be extremely vari variable up to 60 ice or 38 Newton centimeter. So again, this is the correlation between the perceived RFA and the real RFA. And again, what do you see? That we uh, like uh, perceived, for example, here in 85% of the case, we were right in guessing that the implant has a high RFA, but of course, in 50% of the case, we were wrong. Or here, we understood that uh, the RFA was low, but only in 20% of the cases. So, of course, that could bring to several mistakes. This happened for also for the perceived insertion work. And again, uh, very quickly, you can see here that we got the feeling that the implant has a high torque, and we were right in 78% of the cases. That's good. But in 22% of the cases, we were wrong. And again, I want to underline that this has been done by an experienced surgeon that who has placed the same kind of implant for thousands and thousands of numbers before. So, of course, this is a situation. Well, so, in conclusion, the accuracy of primary stability is not, prediction is not good enough to prevent mistake when we use an immediate load intake. So, we encourage very much to use systematically any kind of objective measurement, either for 
ice cube or incenso torque. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. De Jede.